hello, uh, my plant for this project was golden seal or hydrastis canadensis. So I'm just going to go over with you its medicinal uses, its drug interactions, and future directions for research. At the bottom here I have a picture of golden seal hydrastis canadensis from the USDA website. Um, so the common name for this plant is golden seal. Other names include orange root and Indian dye. The scientific name, as I said earlier, is hydrastis canadensis. As you can see in the bottom map here, the native range of Hydrastis canadensis goes from mid-United States over to the east coast of the United States and up into Canada. Um, it's a small herbaceous perennial, typically only growing about 30 centimeters high and wide. Um, over here in the line drawing, you can see that the leaves are very textured. They have five lobes and serrated um, margins as well. Um, you can see as well that they have a single white flower that's produced in the late spring, usually late April or early May. And a red fruit later on is produced in the midsummer, usually July, um, sometimes late June. And this fruit resembles a raspberry. And the root at the bottom you can see is yellow, which gives it its name orange root, sometimes known as yellow root. And this root is where most of the medicinal compounds um, arise. So the habitat for this plant is relatively specialized. Um, it requires soil that has mildly acidic properties, typically a pH between 5.5 and 6.5 is ideal. It does prefer sandy loam soil, but this is flexible as long as you have moist, well-drained soil. Um, because of this fact, a lot of times you'll see this plant growing on a slope because that allows for a lot of water to pass through, but at the same time allows for really good drainage. Um, it does require moderate to deep shade. A lot of times you'll see golden seal growing in forests containing large, deep-rooted trees such as oaks, poplars, walnuts, things like that as well as herbaceous perennials with similar growing requirements, such as woolly blue violet, Solomon seal, and white trillium. Uh, we actually grow golden seal on our farm, and it's grown in a sort of creek area on a slope on the way down to the creek. So again, we have that good drainage and nice moisture. And it is in the shade um, of poplar trees and also other herbaceous perennials. We do have woolly blue violets and a species of trillium there as well. So this is a really good indication of what you might find in a typical wild habitat. So golden seal has a huge history of medicinal use. Um, it's been used for centuries by different tribes of Native Americans as well as by early American settlers. Uh, Cherokee Indians used it as cancer treatment as well as to sanitize wounds and rashes. This could be on the skin or in the mouth and overall as a general health tonic. Uh, the Iroquois Indians used it to treat whooping cough and also to aid in digestion, most notably for indigestion and diarrhea, but other digestive aid purposes as well. And it is a natural insect repellent. Um, today, Golden Seal is among the top five selling herbal products in the United States. It has been proven to be effective against digestive disorders, UTIs, and upper respiratory infections. And at the bottom here, I have a picture of the Golden Seal root, which again, as I said earlier, is where most of the medicinal compounds lay. Um, so, the major active compounds in Golden Seal are isoquinolone alkaloids. Um, I have some pictures here of the major ones, berberine, canadine, hydrastine, palmitine, and hydrastinine. As you can see, these chemical structures are all very similar. We have five rings, um, many of which are conjugated. Um, and you'll see these slight differences usually arise in the center of this molecule where the nitrogen is. And these are the differences that cause um, different mechanisms and different treatments for these different, com for these different compounds. Um, so, berberine, one of those um, alkaloids I just talked about, is an effective chemotherapeutic agent for prostate cancer. Um, so before I go into why this is, I'm going to give you a brief overview on how prostate cancer cells work. So there's two types of cancer cells that are involved in prostate cancer. Um, androgen responsive cells and androgen unresponsive cells. The androgen unresponsive cells are the particularly difficult cancer cells to combat. These are very robust cells. Um, they really evade typical tra cancer treatment and they won't undergo apoptosis as easily as androgen responsive cells were. 
do. A lot of times, too, any treatment that will target these types of cells also has huge toxic effects on your regular prostrate cells, which can be a big issue. So how do we target these unresponsive cells without also targeting our, health, our normal prostrate cells? Well, berberine actually has been shown to be effective against both androgen responsive and androgen unresponsive types without having cytotoxic effects towards those normal prostrate cells. So here at the bottom is just a cool photograph of cancerous cells, um, prostrate cancer cells in an electron microscope, I believe. Okay, so how does this work? Well, berberine first has to cause those cells to stop dividing. Cancer is such an issue because those cells continue to divide. So even if you're causing those cells to die, they're still multiplying. So first of all, we have a G1 phase halt of the cell cycle. So if you look over here at the picture, we can see the blue areas of the G1 phase. This is the phase of the cell cycle where cells are growing but they're not actively dividing. Most cells are in this stage, older cells will be in this stage, and this is not an actively dividing stage. So it's very helpful to make a cancer cell be stuck in this stage so it's no longer able to divide as it, cancer cells very aggressively do. Um, after this G1 phase halt occurs, berberine then affects proteins involved in disrupting the mitochondrial membrane potential. Some of these enzymes include BCL, XL, BCL2, BAX, and caspase 3 and these then will cause increased cancer cell susceptibility to apoptosis. So I've just shown you that berberine is very effective in treating prostate cancer, but Berberine, as well as those other alkaloids I showed you earlier, are also very effective at lowering cholesterol. Um, all five of those that I showed you, berberine, canadine, palmitine, hydrastine, and hydrastinine, um, are effective in lowering cholesterol. Berberine does so by binding to DNA, and it's able to do this because it's planar, so it links into that DNA chain much better than the non-planar molecules. So there are likely other mechanisms going on. Um, it's been suggested that the compounds are working synergistically through many mechanisms that are still pretty poorly understood today. The base here on the graph um, is just a, a comparison between berberine and gray and canadine in black and how effective they are at certain doses for treating um, high cholesterol and normalizing those LDL levels. And you can see they're both very effective at high doses and canadine is even more effective than berberine. So although there are so many great potentials of golden seal, it does have some very significant interactive effects that need to be considered. Um, golden seal extract is shown to be inhibitory to many important enzymes for typical drug breakdown, the most notable of which is cytochrome P450. It oxidizes 40 to 50 percent of the drugs taken by humans in the United States, and golden seal extract stops this enzyme from working, therefore stopping you from being able to metabolize these drugs effectively. Other enzymes include the CYP2C19, CYP2D6, and CYP2C9, which also catalyze a lot of different substrates, such as progesterone, codeine, and ibuprofen. So as you can see, it's really important to understand how your drugs are being broken down and how your supplements are working so that you know what these interactive effects may be. And over here is just a um, 3D model of what cytochrome P450 looks like. Other uses that I found to be really interesting, um, golden seal is considered to be biodiversity friendly. Uh, this means that golden seal helps protect other wild species. Um, it also is very viable as a plant because it's high value without taking up much space and it really doesn't require much input from humans. It grows well as long as you have the right soil and shade requirements. It grows well. Um, by itself. It also provides food for pollinators, sometimes has endophytes, may provide protection for other species. So it has a lot of potential as an uh, environmental protectant there. Um, roots can also be used as a yellow dye for fabric. So you can boil down the root extract and use the extraction to dye fabric really beautiful yellow. You can see how nice that yellow would be. Here's a picture of the root powder. Couldn't find an actual picture of the fabric dyed with it, but it is very vibrant. 
Um, it also has been thought to help pass drug urine tests in the past, but this is not true, so keep note of that. Unfortunately, golden seal is now considered to be at high risk of extinction. Um, in the past decade, over-harvesting of woodland populations has caused golden seal to be at risk. The populations themselves are fewer, and the size of the populations are smaller. Um, luckily, efforts are now focused on cultivating and propagating golden seal, and this will not only help reclaim lost territory for the plant, but it will also allow us to better control quality and medicinal content of the plant. So we're much, we'll be better at standardizing those compounds within the plant um, for medicinal properties. So future directions. I think that it is very important to undergo clinical trials regarding hydrasis canadensis chemotherapeutic uses. It seems to have a lot of potential. Um, preliminary studies have suggested that it will be incredibly effective without being overly toxic. So clinical trials to test this would be vital. Uh, studies aimed at understanding those interactive effects and efforts to publicize these interactions should be a priority as well so people know what drugs to avoid taking or to avoid taking golden seal if they're taking these drugs. And finally, further studies to optimize cultivation practices, again, to protect wild population and to control or standardize the quality and concentration of those alkaloids within golden seal. These are my references. They're all really great papers. If you're interested, um, they're all really good. So I would suggest reading them if you want more information. Thank you.